Well, for the past several years, we've been using our Honda CRV here as more than just transportation when we're out and about in remote areas. We've been using it more as a as a pack mule because there's limited space here in the Class C and it's been nice to actually store some things and haul some things around in the back of the CRV. I just removed the back seat and it gives us a lot of room. And one of the things that uh, that I've been hauling around has been uh, a portable DC uh, fridge freezer. It's been nice to keep some food back there, but it requires uh, power. It requires 12 volt DC power. And our uh, towing system here, our Roadmaster towing system, we got its tow bar, we've got this big bracket. It also includes a braking system that sits on the floor in front of the driver's seat that actually applies the brake. And it also requires 12 volt DC power. That's been an issue with this towing setup for many years for us. We've had this set up for about 13 years now. At the end of the day, the power on the battery of the car is actually drawn down. I always got to recharge it. And now that we have that freezer in the back of the car as well, I've had to use a portable battery bank to power that. And that's just one more thing I got to maintain. So what I did recently uh, before hitting the road this year was to actually run some power from the RV since we have lithium batteries and solar and I ran power from here and was able to actually power those systems in the car from the RV and I want to walk you through how I set that up and how it's working and uh, show you how everything's connected inside the RV maybe it'll give you an idea for something you can do especially if you tow a vehicle like we do Now you might be looking at this setup and saying, hey, wait a minute, um, isn't this red cable here the power cable? And you know, can't you power that stuff through here? And the answer is a yes and no. And what uh, the purpose of this cable is, is actually just for the lights. So it's wired into the, uh, the tail lights, the turn signals, and the brake lights on the back of the CRV here. And uh, those wires are wired into the corresponding circuits on the back of the RV here. So when my lights are on, or when I hit my brakes, or you know when I want to turn left or right, it uh, powers those uh, those corresponding lights on the CRV. It doesn't provide power when I'm uh, when I'm not using my lights or when the engine's not running. So uh, I needed to be able to just provide a steady source of 12 volt power regardless of whether I'm using my lights or not. And luckily what I found is that once I took this out and I looked at the uh, the male plug on both sides of, of these, I found that there are two pins that weren't being used. So there was this middle pin here and then one of them here just left of, of center that uh, weren't connected to anything. So that was a good thumbs up for my, uh, my plan that I could still use this cable and just uh, wire a 12 volt circuit to those two pins. So just a positive and a negative, run that throughout the car and then wire it up on the RV side to be able to uh, tie into my 12 volt system. Let's see here. Pretty tight squeeze. <laughs> so here on my uh, power panel, I actually ran a separate circuit, this one right here, that was going to power a lot of stuff underneath the back of the RV, including that uh, connection to the car. And just a positive is run into the distribution panel here to the circuit, and I have a 30 amp fuse on it. And the negative uh, cable is actually wired to this grounding bus bar where all the other negative uh, DC power connections are. Now the reason I uh, use such a large fuse here is because I'm also using the circuit for a couple other things that uh, you may have seen me talk about in previous videos. So let's uh, go underneath <laughs> the RV and I'll show you where those two wires for this uh, DC circuit end up. Now from that DC distribution panel, it comes out of the floor here and into this box that I installed on a recent project. And from there it powers three different circuits. One of them goes into this compartment here, which is primarily what that 30 amp uh, 
fuse is for because my Viair air compressor sits in here and it's really convenient to be able to just uh, run that from here without having to take it out and can air up all my tires and all that stuff. So the second one is this one here which goes out to the uh, air compressor I installed for my uh, airbags. So that's that uh, remote uh, control air compressor to inflate and deflate the airbags. That works really well. And finally this third one is the one that I just installed and it's all spliced together here and that goes all the way back to the rear all the way back we're pretty close to the to the rear now here's my spare tire so that one goes all the way back to that plug that I can hook up and power the car with all right, once you can remove the male plug on either side of the car and on the RV side wiring up uh, this plug the connecting the pins on the back is not a difficult thing to do because they're uh they're not soldered or anything but it probably has a boot like this on the back this rubber boot that you can simply slide off and remove and then there's uh these little tubes that you slide the the wire in so you just strip off a little bit of the wire and then you can slide it in and then tighten it with this little screw. So you'll need a tiny little screwdriver. So you can see here's the positive and the negative terminal here on the car. And then just put the boot back and if you want to tape it up that's fine. And then just uh, reattach the plug to the car. Now the most difficult part is going to be running the the wires through your vehicle and you know it's going to be different depending upon what type of vehicle you have. Now from that plug here behind the grill I ran the, the electrical wire all the way underneath and into the engine compartment here and created two separate uh, lines. Now one of them is going to be wired under the dash to power the uh, to power the braking system and the second one is going to run all the way to the back of the CRV to power anything back there primarily our uh, our 12 volt freezer. So the braking system, as I mentioned earlier, sits here on the floor in front of the driver's seat. And luckily there's already a hole in the firewall here. So I was able to run the, uh, the wires through there and install uh, a receptacle just under the dash here out of sight. So it made it easy to uh, just plug that, uh, that cord in from the braking system and uh, it works just fine. So what I'd have to do before is to take this uh, plug here from the brake and uh, plug it into the receptacle here on the dash and you know that would draw power from the car battery. Now I can take it and just run it over here and plug it into this receptacle under here which is powered from the RV. There it goes. It's filling the uh, cylinder with air so that it can apply the brakes. All right. Okay, now I'll hit this uh, test button here and uh, you'll see how this system works. You can look at the pedal back there and we'll hit the test button. There it goes. See it applying the brake. All right, now back here is where I ran that second 12 volt circuit and it uh, ends here at this at this receptacle here, but I had to run it all the way through the bumper here and all the way along the, you know, the rails and underneath the car and up through this taillight assembly, through this wall and ultimately to this point here. It was uh, kind of a pain in the butt and it's gonna certainly vary depending upon the vehicle you have, but it all works and now I can just take this and plug it in right here. So super convenient. Now I've got power to the freezer. I can run it all day, all night. Everything's good. And maybe you're wondering what do you keep here in the freezer? Well, 
bacon. Frozen meatballs, easy to reheat. Oh, chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> uh, some other meat, fish filet, and in the morning, I like to come out and get with my coffee and have a nice little frozen donut. Hmm. Doesn't really get any better than this. Now what about when we unhook the car? We still have power to the freezer and all the other stuff. Let me show you. I ended up using the extra wire that I had and picked up a couple of these female six pin trailer plugs and simply wired up, uh, I guess it's an umbilical cord of sorts. So when I'm not hooked up to the tow bar and you were coming and going, I simply can just uh, connect this back to the RV. And then this end, And I am back in business and I can keep the uh, car powered up from the RV uh, throughout the night, all day, whatever, as long as I'm parked, you know, within 10 feet or so. Works really well. So if you're using your RV to power other things, like in my case, our car, then uh, be sure to leave a comment below and let us know how you implemented that and how it's working out. And maybe if there are some cool ideas that you've come up with, please share those. This is just uh, the setup that I came up with for our car. It seems to be working pretty well and I hope it gave you some ideas to implement on your own RV. And if you like videos like this, you know, DIY project ideas, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give the video a like if it uh, helped you out, got you thinking. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Once again, we're at the end of a nice, beautiful day here, so I think it's time to chill and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.